Hi, this is Sherman with Highland Park, and I'm going to show you how to solve the problem of my saw is not working. I don't know what's up with the switch box because typically one of the things that can happen is the fuse can get blown on the switch box. I'm going to integrate this in with another video that you'll see that my brother shot tracing you through the wires. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your saw is unplugged and then remove all four screws from the switch box and uh, we're going to open it up and show you. Um, all you need is a Phillips screwdriver for this. Very simple to do. Now, because we use a uh, Permatex um, gasket maker, you'll notice that on most of the saws, the box will just sit there even though I ain't taking the screws off because it's partially glued on. Get it? And then I'm gonna open the saw. So bring the video around here. So if you look inside here, you're gonna see a couple components. This is the wiring that goes to the hood switch here. This is your main toggle switch. Um, and then this is your contactor that turns on and off the saw. And to the your right of the contactor is the fuse. To check the fuse, you basically pop this open. I lift the bottom and I open this up and you'll see there's my fuse. And there's also an extra fuse here. You might wanna bring it around so they can see. There's an extra fuse in here. This is the fuse down here that gets used. And to remove that, I'm just gonna pop that out with my fingers. And, and if you take a look in there, uh, I'll just put this where you can look down here. You'll see, if you can get close to that, or maybe here, you'll see that there's a filament on the inside. And I'll take it and show really close. There's a little filament, little piece of wire going through the center of that. That's the fuse. If your fuse looks blackened on the inside, like something burnt, that means that you blew your fuse. And the causes for fuses being blown can be a variety of different reasons. This one's fine. Um, uh, if your fuse is blown, you can remove this extra, pop it down here, and then uh, snap it into position, slip it down in the box. So that's all you'll need to do to check your fuse. All right, so this is the control box on the uh, saw that you're working on and basically what we have here is you've got your e-stop button that's e-stop off e-stop on your start button your hood switch and your toggle on toggle off now the toggle uh, should be mounted where the, the terminals here here at the back if by chance it got back way around then it would work opposite it shouldn't be mounted any other way than this where on is out so when the the chain is pulling it pulls it off so those are the controls this is the contactor if you have the box open being really careful not to touch any uh, componentry that will give you a shock you can push this actuator down if there's power on the power cord it should start the motor so you don't want to do that if you if you got your hood open and it's all full of oil because you'll oil down your shop so this is the contactor on the contactor, there's, con uh, there's contacts for the coil, which is A1 here and A2. That's where the coil goes. So I'm going to kind of trace through the circuit for you. Uh, the power cord comes in on the black and white line. The black line goes to L1. That's your main supply that, that goes feeds through the contactor where it's on and goes down to the motor hot. The white wire goes over to a neutral terminal here and you'll see it just passes through and goes to here over to the motor as well. Ground is going to ground, ground on both sides of the power cord. So that's your power coming in. The rest of the circuit is your interlock that supplies the coil. So this wire that comes off L1, this little jumper here, comes down, goes through a fuse, then comes off of the fuse and the C. It comes over here to the E-stop. That's the very first thing it goes to. The e-stop has a normally closed contact, which means when the button is out, the power can flow through it, and it goes through, the hood switch comes back to this toggle switch, and then out of the toggle switch to this, uh, con this is a set of contacts here. Um, and then in parallel, you'll see that there's an on switch. So the contacts of the on switch here are going between these two contacts so when you push the on switch this pulls down and then latches the contactor on 
so that the power keeps flowing. When this switch gets tripped, the e-stop gets pushed, or the hood switch gets uh, pushed, it will interrupt the circuit and allow the contactor to turn off. So if you, if you kind of look through it, you have a wire that comes down through here, goes to the normally open switch, which comes around here and goes to A2, which jumpers right up here to this terminal number 14. That's the whole circuit. Now, if this toggle switch gets uh, a, a faulty set of contacts, you can take these wires off of these two contacts here and just move them over to the other. This is an extra set of contacts in the switch. You just move the red one here to the one beside it and this one here to this side. This is one set of contacts. This is another set of contacts. So it's possible toggle switch could cause your problem. So you can switch these over and everything starts working, then run it. There's you know no reason to have to worry about replacing the toggle if you got one set of working contacts in it because you only use one. Um, other than that, um, the other things that could cause the problem are you know if, if the contacts uh, in the normally open contact block are bad. Uh, if, if you check all this and it all looks good uh, and you still can't get it to run, then swap the box out. Now, if you swap out the box, it's super simple. After you un unhook this from the saw, now you'll just undo the bolt that has that little bolt that passes through the tank. You'll just undo that so it's all hanging on here. We haven't put these on yet. But you'll see there's three wires. The black to the motor goes to T1, the white goes down to the neutral terminal block, and the green goes to the green terminal block. So if we end up sending you another box, that's all it takes to replace it. It's very simple. Um, then when you go to put your box back together, um, you'll want to use some uh, Permatex Ultra Black, some sealant in all four holes, and then I'll put the screws in. Um, I want to show you one little thing, and that is the, uh, the uh, there's adjustment to the switch box to uh, adjust the height of it. Let me see if I can get this to come out. Um, because you do need to adjust so the hood switch is working properly on our professional level saws. Um, so I'm putting my glue in place right now. And I want to try not to bend that little switch wire. If you do bend the switch, wire right here, you can bend it back with the pliers. It's pretty easy to straighten it out. Um, and so I'll put my screws back in. I don't want to tighten all screws down until I have all four in place. Uh, so I'll put one in, put a second one in here, um, and then the other two. And you'll note that um, on your box, and you'll see that as soon as we show the video here, we slot the boxes of a little so it can be adjusted up and down on the saw. And I'll show you how you're doing that to adjust the hood switch here. Close the hood. Now you notice that, bring it up close, you'll notice that the box can raise up and down. There's a little slot there. I typically push this up so I make sure that that switch is fully engaged. Tighten it down, tighten my next screw down, and then the bottom two screws. Do not over tighten these and strip them out. I've had some people that uh, have muscled too much. You don't have to have these super tight. GDM slug, snug so your box is in place. 